you can move that over a little if you want. <coughs> Hi, I'm Allison Deisler. Thank you all for being here this evening. She came into this world on September 11, 2001, born on a day of tragedy. Nine-year-old Christina Taylor Green had recently been elected to be the president of her elementary school's student council. She was interested in politics and had developed her civic engagement at a young age. It was her dream to one day run for Congress. She wanted to live in a world free of terrorism, free of violence. It was this passion for politics that drew Christina to her local <coughs> supermarket on a Saturday morning this past January. Her congresswoman, Gabrielle Giffords, was speaking her to, to her community that morning, and Christina couldn't wait to ask her congresswoman the questions that she prepared at home the night before. For Christina, it was going to be a day to remember. However, almost instantaneously, it became her family and our country's worst nightmare. Within moments of her arrival, nine-year-old Christina took a bullet to her chest, a bullet that came from the gun of 22-year-old Jared Lochner, an American citizen carrying a high-capacity magazine. The little girl who dreamed to run for Congress died at the scene. Lochner killed six others that morning and wounded 12, with only in, only in a matter of seconds. Our classrooms and communities are becoming war zones. Regular citizens like you and I possess military-like weaponry, making it both easy and efficient to commit mass murders, to shoot multiple people in short amounts of time without having to pause to reload their guns. For this reason, the United States should outlaw all high-capacity magazines and should make it a felony to possess such a weapon. In this speech, I'll do four main things. First, we'll look at what gun violence looks like in our country today. After that, we'll discuss where the problem is coming from. I will then propose a solution to the problem, and we'll finally address advantages and disadvantages to said proposal. This problem is recent and real. Throughout our lives, we've seen the damage that high-capacity magazines have done. It's not so hard to remember three years ago when a gunman entered the Virginia Tech campus and shot and killed 32 of his fellow classmates. In fact, this problem is especially relevant today, as today, April 20th, marks the 11-year anniversary of the shootings at Columbine High School. What if a gunman entered our campus and shot our friends? What if it was your brother who had been shot? What if it was your roommate? Before Vanderbilt University becomes the next Virginia Tech, something must change. A magazine or clip is an ammunition storing and feeding device, either within or attached to a repeating firearm. What this means is it's a part of the gun that holds the bullet, and high-capacity magazines hold more bullets than is deemed normal, sometimes holding up to 50 bullets in a row, allowing the gunman to shoot all of them without having to pause to reload his or her gun. Guns like this are made for killing people, and there is no place for them in our society. Rob LaMontagne of the Violence Policy Center reported in January of 2011, high capacity magazines are the common thread that runs through most mass shootings. And just days before publishing his article, the shootings in Tucson, Arizona that I described earlier joined the list of some of our country's most notorious mass murders, Columbine, Virginia Tech, Wedgwood Baptist, all of which were made possible by gunmen carrying high capacity magazines. The Center for Disease Control's National Center for Injury Prevention and Control reported in 2008 that every day in our country, guns claim 84 lives, and they wound nearly 200. Every year, they claim 30,000 lives and wound nearly 70,000. That same year, the Brady Center to Prevent Gun Violence reported that the firearms death rate in our country is eight times higher than in other high-income countries, and the death rate among children under the age of 15, like Christina Taylor Green is 12 times higher in the United States than in 25 other high-income countries combined. The National Rifle Association's Institute for Legislative Action reported in 2008 that there were only two states in our country which prohibited carrying concealed firearms in public. What this means for you and I is that it's common for someone near us to have a gun in their pocket. These are the kinds of guns that soldiers used on faraway battlefields. They don't belong in our communities said Senator Frank Lautenberg from, from New Jersey in an op-ed published just three months ago by CNN. 
Our classrooms, our movie theaters, our shopping malls, our bowling alleys, they're all unsafe. The Brady Center to Prevent Gun Violence estimates the direct medical costs for firearm injuries to be at $4 billion a year, with annual indirect costs at $19 billion a year. And without change, these problems will continue to grow. And the problem comes from the belief that everyone and anyone in our country can and should own whatever type of firearm save life. While constitutionally this may be true, we have the right to bear arms, people tend to ignore the limitations that exist and the dangers that come from giving citizens access to such high power lethality. <coughs> there are misconceptions about defense and our legislators <coughs> are weakened by lobbyists such as the NRA, our country's largest and most influential gun rights lobby. The attitude in our country is too hands off when it comes to gun control and I think you all can agree with me that it's time that we do something to curtail deranged individuals the ability to slaughter large amounts of people in short amounts of time. House Resolution 308 is a bill currently going through Congress and it would prohibit the transfer sale and importation of all high capacity magazines. However, it would allow people to keep what they have. And I say this is too liberal, too many of them are already out there. Look what they've done, and look what they will continue to do. Too many people have died. I propose that we outlaw the possession and sale of all magazines carrying seven rounds or more. All owners will have 90 days from the effect of the law to turn it into law enforcement. No questions asked. You won't get in trouble. In fact, the government will reimburse you 50% of the retail price that you paid for your weaponry. People paid good money for these guns, but they don't need them anymore. If you're caught with a high capacity magazine, your first offense will result in a $1,000 fine and 90 days in jail. Your second offense, $5,000, a year in jail. Any manufacturer or retailer caught producing or selling such weaponry to civilians will incur a $100,000 fine. My proposal will be enforced by the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. This um, law enforcement organization within the U.S. Department of Justice protects our communities from violent crime, criminal organization, and the illegal use and trafficking of firearms. According to its website, in 2009, the ATF had 5,008 employees, and that year it conducted 11,375 firearms compliance inspections. The cost to my proposal will be increasing this number of inspections by about 3,000 per year, and the cost for reimbursement of the weapon rate. This will be funded by the fines collected from non-compliance and, if needed, a 5 to 10 percent surcharge on gun sales. For the government, the dollar cost to this proposal is far outweighed by the number of lives it will save. It is an investment in people. There are so many advantages to this proposal and, most importantly, it will save lives. There will be a lesser climate of fear as our communities will be generally safer. And people will still be able to defend themselves. They just don't need 100 bullets to do so. There are naysayers who will see disadvantages to this proposal. They'll say the Second Amendment gives us the right to bear arms. However, there's a difference between defense and war zones in our neighborhoods. Congresswoman Carolyn McCarthy, a longtime gun, rights, gun control advocate, wrote in a memo introducing H.R. 308 to Congress on January 13, 2011, just as we all celebrate and defend the First Amendment, but also understand that practical limits must be in place, such as not shouting fire in a crowded theater, so too should we be able to respect the Second Amendment, while at the same time supporting common sense regulations. I also think that people may not voluntarily turn in their guns. Instead, they'll use them to commit the same mass murders, and then will turn the guns on themselves, in which case, enforcement won't matter. And finally, I anticipate opposition from the NRA, who according to the Violence Policy Center has board members with direct financial interests in stopping such a ban. These board members are the manufacturers of high capacity magazines, and they're not looking out for our communities, they're looking out for their profits. A public service announcement by the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence said it best. A magazine that allows a gun to fire 32 shots in 16 seconds is only good for one thing. 
killing a lot of people fast. Mass murders. High capacity magazines are killing large amounts of people across our country. Everyday families and everyday communities have been shattered because with the high capacity magazine, all it takes is one person, one vengeance, one plan, one handgun, and one minute. So don't let our community be next. Thank you.